think there's a different hymn that is our first one. I could be wrong about that. Are we? You're probably looking at 452. This is fine. I just wanted to, to let the congregation catch up with us. So let's do 452, Awake, O Sleeper, Rise from Death. No worries. I just could sense the collective confusion. <laughs> no problem. That'll do it. <laughs> Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Us pray. O Lord God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love. 
that made alive by your spirit, we may know goodness and peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, you may be seated, and kids, stay where you are. Don't come down front this morning, since we're being as careful as possible. But let me, I want to give you a job, something to listen for during the rest of the service, especially as Trink in a minute is going to do our readings, and the psalm today, the psalm today is a psalm of praise. So that psalm of praise means that we're going to hear the word praise lots of different times. And the, the psalm or the song is going to imagine that all kinds of things are praising God, which means they're basically saying, yay, God, we love you, God, we think you're awesome, God. That's what praise means. And so all kinds of things are going to praise God, the sun and the moon and the stars and some cows and some sea monsters and lots of other stuff. So when you hear the word praise in the psalm, grown-ups, you can do this too, I want you to try to do the sign for, for praise, which I understand from the internet, where of course you can believe everything, but I understand from the internet that the sign for praise is like two soft claps, like that, as if we're applauding. That makes sense, all right? So listen through the psalm, and then when you hear the word praise, do a couple of light claps like that, and we'll see how much praising is going on, and be on, on the lookout for what's doing that praising. All right, so I'll pass it off to Trink, and she'll start us off with the first reading, and then we'll get into that psalm. The first reading is from the 11th chapter of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why did you go to the uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angels standing in his house, saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had with us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we will read response. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all the angels. Sing your praise, all your hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven and the heavens, and the new waters. 
stars above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded, and they were created. May them stand fast forever and ever, giving them all that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Alleluia. The second reading is from the 21st chapter of Revelations. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's people, and God will be with them. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. The first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, God said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then God said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to the 13th chapter of St. John. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Judeans, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that your word is trustworthy and true. And we thank you that you show us how to love in a way that we find so hard to do much of the time. Reveal your wisdom to us this morning and form us into people who can do our best to love the way that you love. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. So much happens at tables, celebrations and consolations. Families are made stronger and Families hurt each other. Treaties are negotiated and broken. 
What are some of the significant table moments in your life? I remember so many. When I graduated from seminary, my family hosted a dinner at my favorite restaurant in Berkeley. We got one of the back rooms and lots of my favorite people were around that table. Members of my family, friends who had become family, gay people and straight people, Christians and atheists, different cultures and geographies and generations and histories. We ate and we told stories and we laughed together at that table. Many years before that, I was making plans to attend a significant event in the life of the child of one of my good friends. And there was going to be a gathering afterwards at a local restaurant. My friend called me ahead of time to ask if he could seat me at the table between his divorced parents. They'll behave if you're there, <laughs> my friend said. <laughs> I mean, the good news is that uh, they did behave. The bad news is that a dinner party isn't too much fun when you're worried that any moment you might have to referee a fight between two fully grown adults. The table I would really like to forget, maybe some of you too, is that table in the middle school cafeteria. The table where I ate lunch with my friends, day after day, until the day when I suddenly wasn't allowed to sit with them anymore. I wish I could time travel to tell eighth grade Krista that everything would work out, that there would be plenty of tables and plenty of friends and plenty of seats in the years to come. But at the time, my heart was broken. Our gospel today involves a little bit of time travel because it takes us back before the appearances of the risen Jesus, before the empty tomb, before the crucifixion, that piece of John's gospel that I just read, it comes from the night just before Jesus is hauled off to be killed, a night on which he gathers around a table with his disciples. You notice how Judas slips away at the beginning of the part that we read? <laughs> Judas is heading out to rendezvous with the religious and political authorities to lead them to a place where they can arrest Jesus. Now, those of you who have heard me preach on Monday, Thursday over the years, you know how remarkable I find this fact, that during the meal, that last meal before he dies, Jesus shares the supper with Judas. Jesus shares the supper with the person he knows will betray him. He knows that Judas will hand him over to be killed. And yet, he feeds him. Jesus also, by the way, shares the supper with Peter, the person he knows will deny him three times later that night. So when Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you, he's not talking about an abstract, superficial, conditional kind of love. He's talking about a generous, merciful, incomprehensible love. So fast forward to the book of Acts, where we find Peter, that same three-time denier of Jesus, we find him after the resurrection. After Jesus has ascended to heaven, Peter's doing his best now to tell people about Jesus. He's stepping up. And for Peter and for his friends, people fall into clear categories. They and their families are Jewish, and all of these other people are Gentiles. And there are laws that Jews observe, laws about what to eat and what not to eat. There are many other laws, but those dietary laws are among the most significant. And these are not arbitrary rules. These strictly observant ways of living, they have helped the Jewish people hold on to their identities as the people of God, in times of being conquered by armies that worshiped many gods and tried to force them to worship those many gods. It's kept them together as the people of God in times of exile when they were living as strangers in a strange land. 
But now, Jesus has told Peter and the others that the mission will be much larger than they could have imagined. Jesus has sent the disciples out. He says at the beginning of Acts, you need to go be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jews and Gentiles alike are invited into this growing community. In the chapter just before the one Trink read this morning, a Roman soldier named Cornelius and his entire household have been baptized. And Peter has spent several days there at Cornelius' house, which we can only imagine involved lots of time around tables, eating and sharing stories and laughing together. But that's what gets Peter into trouble with some of his Jewish friends who criticize him for being careless about the dietary laws by eating with Gentiles. And that's when Peter tells them about this vision that God has recently sent him. It's a vision in which God signals that it is okay to broaden who can be part of this early Christian community. The Holy Spirit, Peter is learning, does not discriminate. As Peter says, If then God gave them, gave the Gentiles, the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? Who was I that I could hinder God? That's a question we should ask ourselves more often. The book of Acts, it is about this ethic of belonging, one that keeps on expanding. And that belonging often shows up as hospitality, people gathering together, eating together, sharing a table together. Who are we that we could hinder God? Who is missing from our tables? Who might we invite? Who needs to be told explicitly that they are welcome because they've been sent away from so many other tables. I find it hard to love the way that Jesus dies. I just do. I don't know how to love a man who deliberately goes to a grocery store in a black neighborhood and kills 10 people. I don't know how to love people who go after vulnerable women I don't know how to love people who threaten the well-being of transgender teenagers. I'm not saying for a moment that Jesus approves of what mass shooters and white supremacists do or what they believe. But I know he loves them. He would feed them. He wants to be in relationship with them in such a way that they might turn away from their weapons and from their hatred and turn toward an ethic of love. And I also know that Jesus pulls up a chair right next to him and says to those who have been hurt again and again by the violence and the racism and the hatred of the world, he says, I have a seat for you right here. Have some food, relax. Be yourself without being afraid. The poet laureate of the United States, Joy Harjo, she's the first Native American to hold that position, by the way. She's in her second term. She has a poem that opens with this line. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. Think about all the things you've experienced around tables. Think about how we might give shelter to people around this communion table. What kind of community awaits us around the table? The Holy Spirit is still insisting that we dream bigger dreams. So listen now to Joy's poem. It's a a poem for her community, for her native community, and I think she won't mind if we imagine it as a vision for the community of the world. 
Listen to it as a kind of prayer of thanks and a prayer of challenge, a reminder of what kind of community is possible. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us and put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and we have prepared our parents for burial there. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. Amen. Let us together confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At the end of each petition, I will say, God, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and of all creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive your gifts in those we least expect. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us toward more deliberate care of the world that you have made. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experiencing despair and great need. We pray for those traumatized by yesterday's shooting in Buffalo. Empower us to bring an end to racism and violence. We pray also for the loved ones of Thomas as they grieve his death, including his wife Kimberly. We pray for Sam, Tina, and Al. We pray for all those on our prayer list and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. God, in your mercy, place holy love at the center of all our relationships and communities. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints and bless us with a shared identity as your children. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Please share that peace.
living God, you welcome, you welcome us all at your table. table. Reach, Reach out, out to us through this meal and, and show us your wounded and risen body, body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith, singing together. resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come to the table, for there's a place for you. And if you're joining us from home or from afar, know that this is the body of Christ, given for you. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Congregation may be seated.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this meal we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We'll do a few announcements. As you can see from the exciting growing pile in the North X, we are still collecting clothing for our friends at the Market Street Mission, as well as new packaged underwear and socks. So we've got a couple more Sundays in May. Keep on bringing those in. Thank you. You have seen in the bulletin and maybe in the weekly word, we have a little bit of a wonky schedule this week. So let's start with Linda's schedule. Just as a reminder, her moving day is tomorrow. So she will not be here tomorrow. Say some prayers, because if you've moved, you know that that's not a fun task. <laughs> she's still local, as I said last week. So she's moving day tomorrow. And then on late Wednesday afternoon, she'll be heading to Florida for a week to see her family, her grandchildren, they're down there. So we wish her a delightful time on that trip. And that means that she'll be in the office Tuesday and Wednesday. So if there's anything that you need her um, to know, then Tuesday and Wednesday is your window of opportunity, okay? I, I was supposed to be at, out at camp Monday through Wednesday to co-facilitate a retreat. I will not be doing that. I'll be joining it virtually instead. So that means I won't be here in the office um, at least Monday through Wednesday. I'll keep doing tests at home and we'll see how the week goes from there. So if you need to reach me this week, the best way to do that is to email me or to reach out via my cell phone number, which is the one that's in the weekly word. We hope that COVID has decided it's messed with us enough this Sunday, and will leave us alone next Sunday so that we can celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Baptism for Teddy Thompson. So please do join us next Sunday so that we can receive Teddy into the body of Christ and celebrate with his family. Those of you who have more of a green thumb than I do, there are a few Easter lilies left. They're just outside the door leading outside, and if you would like to take one or more of those lilies home and plant them somewhere. Ruth, you know better than I do. They'll, they'll come back in a future year, won't they, if you plant them and <laughs> take care of them? Okay, we have it on good authority that so that's a good thing to add to your garden if you're so inclined. Have at it. Take, take as many as you like. And out, there's a registration form out on the bulletin board for a workshop that will be held on Saturday, July 11th. If any of you have wanted to learn more about Martin Luther's small catechism, my friend and colleague, the, the Reverend Miles Hopgood, for whom this is an area of specialty, will be providing a workshop that day. So you can register for that, the, the forms are there. And while you're there, sign up for a coffee hour sometime in the coming weeks. There, the sign-up sheet is there, and I think we do have coffee hour today. So thank you so much for that. Anything that I'm forgetting? Yes, Elaine. Oh, yes, that's right. I feel like it's already going to be May the 20th, is it? <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Come join us on May the 20th, which is Friday, starting at 4.30, 4.30 until, yeah, until, until we're festive, festive out. So come, starting at 4.30 on Friday afternoon, Fellowship Hall, we'll hang out and enjoy some good company together. Bring your own beverage, and there'll be some snacks provided. Is that right? Good snacks. Good snacks. I've never known any other kind <laughs> in this congregation, but so join us on Friday if you, if you can. And let's say thank you once again to Stephen, who really is always wonderful. And we sent out whatever the church musician version of the bat signal is yesterday, and he responded. So thank you very much. Is there anything else for the good of the community? All right. Again, I apologize for not greeting you in person on the way out, but... I am shunning you out of love. <laughs> All right, so please stand for the blessing. Go now, glad and rejoicing, for this is the day that Lord has made. 
and Christ is risen, that all may be made alive in him, no matter what challenges this world sends our way. Put your hope in the risen Christ and bear witness to that hope in word and deed. Set some extra seats at the table. May God be your strength and your joy. May Christ Jesus meet you in your grief and become your salvation. And may the Holy Spirit raise you to new life in Christ. Amen.